This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. We're in London today with me, the new undisputed yeah. lightweight champion of the world, Katie Taylor. Katie, has that title sank in yet? It sounds great, actually. Every time anyone ever says that, I just like, oh, I can't believe that's me. Um, this is something that I absolutely dreamed of since I did turn professional, you know, just less than three years ago. So to have all those five belts is, is absolutely a dream come true. We'll come on to the fight and everything else in a little bit. Firstly, I just want to know, you're someone who is known for spending your life in the gym, constantly yeah. working away. I think it's been a week and a half now. Have you managed to unwind a little bit? Yeah, definitely. I haven't. Um, you know, it, it is great to, to relax. That, that's for sure. I mean, I, I think I've, I was in Connecticut really training for um, in training camp really for the last two years constantly. So I didn't really have much of a much of a break in between fights. So it is great to unwind and relax and just enjoy this victory. This is something as, as I said that I worked towards since I have turned professional. It's been a, a long, hard uh, couple of years, and I'm del delighted to have finally made it. Before we come on to the specifics of the fight, I just wanted to talk to you about your personal journey from having to disguise yourself as a boy to get yourself a fight, to being a large part of the campaign to allow bo women's boxing in Ireland and then on to the Olympics, winning gold and now this. Where does winning the Undisputed Crown sort of rank among everything you've done in your life and everything you've achieved? I think this uh, that has definitely surpassed anything that, that I've ever done as, a, as an amateur boxer as well as a professional boxer. This is the pinnacle of boxing. You know, this is every fighter's dream is to become an undisputed champion. So obviously the Olympics was amazing as well because that, that was a childhood dream. That's something that I, that I dreamed of since I was 10 or 11 years old. So to achieve a childhood dream is obviously, is obviously absolutely incredible. But you know, the undisputed title is, is the pinnacle, as I said. So you know, what a journey it's been. I suppose, obviously, you would have been feeling a sense of euphoria after the fight anyway. I saw your homecoming, thousands yeah. of people there in Bray. Did it sort of hit you at that moment when you saw all those people, similar to when you came back after the Olympics? Did it all just sort of sink in at that moment a bit? Yeah, I mean, the support I've gotten from the people at home has been absolutely incredible. Even in, in the low points, even when I came home from, from the Rio Olympics with no medal, it's probably, it was probably the, disappointing, the most disappointing part of my journey. But even then, the, 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 the support and the, and the backing that I got from everybody, everybody back home was amazing. So to actually come home to Five Bells and to see the, the crowd and the support there and to share that moment with them was, was amazing. It definitely makes all the, the sacrifices and all the, the hard work uh, worthwhile when you're actually seeing that support that I have. Let's talk about the fight itself. I know you wouldn't have been surprised by what Delphine Pursun brought into the ring. I think a lot of boxing fans were that perhaps hadn't seen a style or seen a fight before. <laughs> That said, was there anything she did that, that did surprise you? Um, she, was, she was very strong, very overwhelming, relentless work rate. Is there anything that caught you off guard maybe in that fight? Not really. I think I, I, I definitely expected that kind of a fight. I was saying beforehand that it was going to be a fight where I was going to have to show a lot of heart and it was a fight where I was going to have to dig deep and, and I was going to be in the trenches and it, it definitely came to that as well. Um, I don't think it was a, it was a great performance by, by me, but that's what great champions do. They find a way to win um, each time in, in, in a very, very close fight. It was an absolute war, um, a really, really exciting fight. And people have said that the fight was the best female fight they've ever seen. So um, there was definitely a lot of positives that, 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 that come from that fight. And um, the rematch is going to be inevitable now as well. So the rematch is going to be even bigger than, than the, the actual fight itself. So I can't wait for it. We'll come on to the rematch, but I want to talk to you about that feeling. You stood Madison Square Garden, packed house, yeah. everyone anticipating. Yeah. We're just waiting to see yeah. which way the fight yeah. will go, I think. Even you'd agree, it, it could have gone either yeah. way on the cards. Yeah, sure. What's going through your mind at that very moment when you stood there waiting? Yeah, I mean, it was a very, very close fight, so um, I was just delighted. I'm, I'm really, really did that decision went my way. and. Um, but, but the minute the final bell kind of rang, my coach and, and my manager, Brian, uh, were convinced that I had won it from the earlier round. So they definitely reassured me a small bit that uh, they felt confident that, that I did actually win the fight. Um, but to, to hear my name announced was absolutely such a special moment. And the crowd was amazing as well. The atmosphere on the night was, was so special. And you know, to fight for the undisputed title in Madison Square Garden, the Mecca boxing, you really just couldn't write a better script um, than that. It was absolutely amazing, and yeah, yeah I'm, I'm delighted. You mentioned this could be considered your defining night, even though you've got many achievements, both in the pro and the amateur ranks. But 
that said, from what I hear from a lot of people, you're very much a perfectionist. You got the win, but is there a part of you that wants to go in and maybe completely put it to bed in a rematch, which you mentioned yeah, is a possibility? For sure. Yeah, for sure. The rematch is definitely going to be inevitable, and I, and I really look forward to that, to that rematch as well. Um, I would definitely like to, to be there a lot more convincing than, than I did. Um, everyone had it as a really close fight, and um, so I, 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 it was an absolute war, an absolute brilliant fight to be involved in. But I definitely don't want to be involved in too many of those fights, and so I definitely do look forward to the rematch when it does actually happen. With everything you've done for women's boxing, I even remember when you, you first turned pro, um, you outlined your intentions to Eddie Hearn in a, in a Twitter yeah. message saying yeah. that you could be a flag bearer for the sport, etc. We have this undisputed fight on pay-per-view, Madison Square Garden, packed house, everyone's right behind you. I just want to know how important do you think it was that, I know you said it's not your best performance, but that this was such a good fight and such a yeah. big advert for women's boxing as well. Yeah, it was very, very important. And as I said, people have uh, said it was one of the best fights they've ever seen, male or female. And uh, to be involved in a fight like that was absolutely incredible. And it's going to make the rematch even more special as well. This is a fight that people want to see again. And um, so it definitely was great for, for female boxing. And it's very important for female boxers to have great rivalries in the sport as well. That This is going to be a great, brilliant, brilliant rivalry. I know many people, including yourself, perhaps will be clamouring for that rematch. We, you know, people want to see that next. But beyond that, if, if that saga is put to bed, if, if that rivalry is finished with Delphine Persoon eventually, what challenges await you? What do you want to do? The, the Serrano fight's never too far away from yourself. Uh, we always hear it mentioned. There's the potential to go up in weight as well. What goals do you still have left in this sport? What do you want to achieve after becoming undisputed? Yeah, there's definitely plenty of big, big fights out there for me. Uh, like I said, Amanda Serrano is, is, is definitely on the cards quite, uh, very soon as well. That's probably one of the biggest fights of boxing right now as well. Uh, there's mentions of Cecilia Bracas as well, a, a, a light welterweight. Um, I mean, imagine undisputed champion against undisputed champion. That, that really is a history-making fight. And then there's obviously the rematch we're, we're pursuing as well. There's, there's, there's huge fights out there for me. And, it's great to be in this position where I've got big fights um, on the line for, for these next few months and um, I'm not sure what's, what's going to happen next but I'm definitely going to enjoy this victory of, of becoming an undisputed champion and I'll leave that stuff up to Eddie here and my manager Brian. Let's talk about your Netflix documentary quickly. I think you are the only person in this room today that has not watched it. Do <laughs> yeah, you plan right. on watching it soon? Um, maybe I'll watch it some someday when I retire from the sport, I don't know, but I don't feel like I need to watch it since I know the story in my own life. So, <laughs> um, But you know, the, the response from the documentary has been absolutely amazing and um, I'm, I'm so grateful for all the nice comments as well from, from the documentary. So yeah, I don't know if I'll ever watch it though. <laughs> yeah. As someone who, as I mentioned, has been viewed as a flag bearer for women's boxing, um, we've seen the Netflix documentary, these undisputed and unification fights on pay-per-view, etc. Do you just sort of take all this in your stride that you, you may currently be inspiring an, another generation to come through within the sport as well? Yeah, I mean, I think um, the journey really has been amazing. I, I'm, I'm blessed really to be in this position. And I think when I started boxing as a 10 year old, uh, women's boxing wasn't even allowed in, in Ireland at the time. And there's no female boxing in the country at all. So to see every single boxing club in Ireland just packed with female boxers now is, is absolutely, that's just amazing. That's probably my greatest, my greatest legacy really. That's, that's definitely been the most satisfying part about this whole journey. So, um, yeah, it's great to, to, to be an inspiration to people. It's great to be a great example to people, and I'm, I'm really happy to be in this position. Now, I recently heard you on Eddie Hearn's podcast. Yeah. Give it a watch if you haven't seen it. Yeah. And I wouldn't say you were offended, but you were very dismissive of, of him saying that you might have X, Y, and Z amount of fights left. I think yeah. he said you might have four, five, six fights yeah. left. And you were like, excuse me. Yeah. In your mind, even though you've, you've came so far as an yeah. amateur and as a pro, are we still only seeing the beginning of Katie Taylor in the paid ranks? I think so. I think that definitely. This I feel like this is only the start of my my journey. Really, the best is yet to come. I definitely don't um, plan on retiring anytime soon. I feel like I have plenty of years left in me, and um, I feel very fresh and um, I live a good life outside of the, of the gym as well. So it's not as if I, I've abused my body in any way. So I do. I definitely do feel very very fresh. And um, as I said, there's plenty of big big fights out there for me. And there's plenty of years left in me. So yeah, the best is yet to come. All right, Katie Taylor, thank you very much for thank speaking you. to Boxing Social. Cheers, thank you.